Hi, this is Jackie Phillips with Millennium Magazine, and I am here with Lucky Gallimere from the world of Gallimere. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor to interview you. You're at the height of everything. You have this amazing new partnership with the SMG Group. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, very exciting. That's uh, something I worked my whole life for. Yes. Yes. How does this feel? Um... I'm still in shock, actually. I still can't believe that it's, um, it's actually came true. Uh, we're moving very fast. Um, these guys are taking the brand very seriously, and we are building a very strong fan base. So we want to attack in full force. Yes, because now you're in America. You're really known in Europe, I mean, for a long time. Yes, that's true. So now you're back home. Yes, now I'm back home. Uh, we're trying to become as strong as we are in Europe back home. It's a challenge, but... We're overcoming the obstacles. Well, you know, I have really fell in love with your brand and just the inspiration of your brand. And I'm going to quote you because it just was so beautiful. And you had said, a woman has all the tools she needs to be elegant, to be graceful, simply because she is woman. Yes. So that's so inspiring. Oh, thank you so much. You're a passionate, romantic designer. You're inspired to create a piece just to have a like sense of timelessness. But I think you're so much more than that, Lucky, because everything has such a unique sense of timelessness. Right. Yeah, we try, to, we try to create something that's unique, something that's um, easily identified once mm -hmm. you see it. So I feel that our brand can, can be distinctively identified as soon as you lay eyes on it. Yes. Like you wear it. She walks down the street, you say, oh, that's Galamia. Oh, definitely. And that's what we're going for. So, I want to back up a little bit. Your dad is a huge inspiration for you. Yeah. Will you share a little bit about that, please? So, I think that <laughs> every, every, everyone has a hero, and uh, my dad is that for me. Um, there were plenty of times where I felt like I wasn't going to make it, where I wanted to give up, or where it was just too overwhelming. And mm -hmm. he's always been in, 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 the, in the back seat or like in the back of my head just saying that don't give up, you know, life is hard, uh, you, you, you have something unique, you have something that you want to show the world, you get it out there and you keep going, you keep pushing and you, you never stop until, you know, until the wheels fall off. And um, if it wasn't for him, I don't think I would be in this seat right now. And family is very important to you. This was a family business, right? Yes. Yeah, so my grandmother, she started out first. She was a seamstress, a dressmaker, a tailor, everything. Like, we wow. had, the whole basement was full of mannequins and fabric. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I pretty much grew up uh, just watching that as a, as a young boy. And my dad was the one that said, you know what, let's make this a business. Let's find a way to profit from fashion. And he's, uh, <coughs> he's the one that made it a family business. Um, my grandmother, she's in love with me now because she's like, she's living her dream out through me. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of really exciting to see, see her smile every day and to see her happy. And um, hoping to make her proud. <laughs> and well, you are making her proud. <laughs> How old were you when you designed your first piece? Like, did you do it in the basement as a little boy? Yes, I, I don't think, <laughs> I think I, I wasn't even saying my first words before I had the crayon in my hand. Yeah. My grandmother saying, no, this is how you make a skirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I think uh, I was probably, I don't know, probably I, I went to design school since, uh, since a little boy. So I want to say my first like professional piece probably was like in sophomore high school. Wow. Yeah, but it, I've, I've been drawing ever since. I mean, I was in drawing school every summer. Um, I think I learned how to sew at six. Um, I was always, I had pictures of, of me at the sewing machine, like, in my grandmother's, like, arms. So it was definitely, like, something that was meant to happen since birth, I guess. It's totally in your DNA. Okay. Yes. So. Now let's fast forward a little. Then you moved to Miami with your mother. She's a model and a dancer. Yes. How are you inspired in Miami to further your design? So Miami gave, gave me the notion of prints and a provocative, a mm -hmm. cultivating lifestyle that I tried to install in, in my fashion. Uh, 
Miami is just raw excitement, just yes. constantly. It's just a constantly beating, beating path of something happening. And women there, they take no chances. I mean, the mm -hmm. hair, the makeup, the clothes, the shoes, everything is on point because there's always competition. I think women are not really in competition, but they're competitive about who has the best dress, who has the best heels, who has the longest hair. So that we try to really install in the brand. We try to install a Parisian yet Miami DNA into into one brand. Mm -hmm. It's like Miami has slept at Paris and then out came Gallimard. <laughs> 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 and that's really what the brand is. So you have that, that Miami flair, even though you have the elegance of Paris. I couldn't have said it better. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so what made you move to Paris, though? That's a huge, huge move and commitment. Yes. So I felt like there was a piece missing in, uh, in, in my repertoire, in my resume. Mm -hmm. um, I knew how to design. I knew how to create. But I didn't have the avant-garde, the elegance of, a, of the Parisian lifestyle, the Parisian brands, such as, you know, the Yves Saint Laurent, the Dior Chanel's, and the Valentino's. I felt like I was missing that. And the only way to learn that was to actually be at the forefront, at the mm -hmm. helm, which was to go to Paris. To be in it. Yes. I felt like I've conquered the, the resort where, the, mm -hmm. the resort, the glamour, the lifestyle, the flash. But I didn't have the, the elegance, the, the romance, the, the Victorian, the, the wow of sheer and glamour. And there's a mysteriousness in Paris, too, yes. to that elegance. Yes. There is that, that you know, that... That avant-garde, that Parisian beast that just lives there, that you have to be there in order to, to, to sort of, you know, educate yourself on. And capture it. Right. Yes. Now, I know that when you first moved to Paris, you were a stylist, yes. and then you started making your own pieces, yes. and then your clients were like, hey, I want to wear these. That's pretty much how it happened. Um, I, when I... The, the competition in Paris and fashion is just over the hill. Yes. So I felt like I, I wasn't going to be a designer right away because it was mm -hmm. just too many up and coming, it was too many booming, and there were too many names out there. So the best way to show my talent was to dress women in designs that were already created, you know, to take them to Printemps, to Colette, to pick out outfits for them that they could wear to events, and they were loving it. So one day, we, we couldn't find the color that a client wanted. She, mm -hmm. she wanted um, sort of like a lime sprite green. But she, did, she didn't want to like a big fruit. Yeah, <laughs> so, so yeah which is tricky <laughs> with that color. Right, it's very tricky. Or a Sprite can. <laughs> so I decided, you know what, I'm going to create something myself. And I mixed uh, like an ivory white and lime green together. So it sort of looked like, um, I try to, at the time my, my thought process was like the, the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. If I can just mix green, blue, and white, and, and not just green. And she actually loved the piece. So it was we, like an overlay? Yeah, it's like an overlay. But it was, yeah. it was very Miami because it was all chiffon. It was just, <laughs> when she walked, pieces were flowing from her arms, oh, from beautiful. her legs. And she told her friends. Her friends that came to me and says, no, I want you to create your own piece. And a new friend came, then a new friend came. And then I just, it just, I just noticed that, hey, you know what? I'm making my own collection here. I have 13 pieces. Yeah. You know, I might as well just put on a show. And... As as the more and the more and more Galimier, the styling stylist brand became more of a collection, and the brand began to grow as it, what we what it is today, uh, Galimier. So who is the Galimier woman? She is confident. She is risk taking. She is edgy. She's provocative. She's strong. She's sophisticated. She's the one we all inspire to be. She's the inspiration within herself. She's a woman like you. Oh, thank you. Now you have the house of Galamere. You are expanding into all different facets. Could you please share that with our audience? So, um, which is why I'm here with you guys. We yeah. are making a huge, huge push for America, for um, the States and North America. Right now, um, in Europe, our fan base is pretty strong, even though we're trying to get stronger and stronger every day. We're trying to get our American fan base as strong as our European fan base. And we are we're doing lots of promotion, lots of PR, and we're, we want to collaborate with strong people such as Millennium, like yourselves, mm -hmm. to get the brand where we feel it needs to be. And you're in a lot of stores. Would you please share with our audience what stores you're in? And also, your showroom here in New York City. Can you tell us where that is? Yes, we have a showroom in Chelsea, yeah. in Manhattan, uh, just, just along the Hudson. 
Um, our, you can find um, all of our pieces online at galamere.com. We're also on social media at Galamere, which is our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, as far as the the stores uh, in America, currently we're in about 11 specialty stores throughout the country. I'm mm -hmm. um, not sure offhand which is where they are. Well, um, and as in Europe, we're in pretty much every major department store in um, every country through East and Western Europe. That's amazing. It's amazing. Now, I heard a rumor that you have something very big coming up in September. Would you like to share that with us? Yes. <laughs> so this September will be our initial, our first runway show in Paris Fashion Week. So you'll never sleep again, Lucky. Um, I'm trying to. I'm averaging four hours now. Okay. The pills are helping me get to sleep, but uh, <laughs> yeah. if I can get if I can get four, I'm pretty pretty good. I'm averaging about four. I'm told to do six, but four is enough. Well, it's very stressful. How many pieces would you like to have in this collection for your first Paris show? So we want to have a total of sixteen pieces. Mm -hmm. um, six zero. Six zero. Wow, yes. that is huge. Yes. But right now we we have 111. Oh my goodness! And I've cut down about 70. <gasps> so I have 40 strong yes. that I know is going to be there. Yay! So I have about 20 more to go. Well, you still have a lot of time. Yes. Still have a lot of time. And when you have these models trying the pieces on, what is it that speaks to your heart? And you're like, yes, this piece is definitely it, or it's like, oh no, this cannot happen. I like feedback from the model. Mm -hmm. I like feedback from the staff and I like to see how the pieces flow as she moves. Um, I'm, I'm not the one that's going to say yes. I think everything is beautiful. Everything yeah. that I draw I think it's amazing. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would love, I love the reaction from the people. Mm -hmm. If they say mm, this is too over the top, mm, this is too less, this is not good enough, um, then that's what really gets me. It's, it's the answer. It's the reaction from the people that are actually wearing it. So we try to, we try to get the models to walk in the showroom. I try to invite as many people as I can to the showroom. I like to fill it up with people, get the music going, you know, get, get the environment as, mm -hmm. as she would be taking on the world. Yes. And then get the reaction. Sometimes she walks out and you get that, oh, ah, yes. oh my God, wow. Yeah. Love it. Then you get that. <laughs> They're like, I'm really not sure what's happening here. <laughs> so when it goes quiet, I'm like, all right. Yeah. No good. And then you get that, mm, okay, that's okay. That's no good. No, it's no good. When she walks out and you hear that, oh, yes, and you, and you hear that it's like, um, it's like an applause yes. to like an end of a concert, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Okay, that's going in the collection. You're like, no, no, yeah. no, no, this. Yes. Now, what, I mean, from an expert like yourself, when you see a woman, what makes an outfit look beautiful on someone? What do you find compelling in women's fashion, even if it's not your own? Like, how should a woman dress? I feel that a woman wears a certain confidence when she feels beautiful. Yes. I feel like she, she just stands a certain way or she poses a certain way or she talks a certain way. It's just a certain confidence a woman wears when she has on a piece that makes her feel empowered. And we try to chase that with every piece. Well, when we're in love, we feel empowered, too. Whether it's in love with a person, our careers, just life in itself, you know, you have that in you anyway. And that's another piece. That's another um, important key ingredient in our pieces. We make pieces to attract. So if a woman is wearing something, we, we want her to feel like it's all eyes on me. Oh, like, yeah. I, I feel it. Like, I, I feel strong tonight. I feel good. She yeah. looks in the mirror and she goes, it's me tonight. Oh, well, well, your pieces speak for themselves. I mean, come on. <laughs> for sure. Now, I know you're very young, and you have all this wild success. What would you like your legacy to be, Lucky? He was inspirational. He, uh, he inspired me to, to go chase my my dream to go to go fulfill my goals when, when I wore his pieces it felt like I was wearing a body of armor I felt bulletproof and I felt that I could take on the world that's beautiful what would you like to achieve in your life from this moment on and expanding your business 
and just taking over the world. What are some other goals that you have for the House of Galamere? Uh, to me, I, I find I don't find success in numbers um, in in sales as much as everyone does. My my dad always told me that the key to being successful is to make everyone around you successful. If you can look at the top leaders, like you know, everyone you're inspired by, uh, such as a Warren Buffett or uh, Bill Gates or music mogul, they have a team around them that's very successful. Mm -hmm. So if I can make the next Galamere, if I can make the next big designer, then I've won. Well, I feel really lucky to have interviewed you. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here with Millennium. And we will be watching you, Lucky. And congratulations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. This is Jackie Phillips and Lucky Gallimere with the beautiful House of Gallimere.